Tuesday, April the 4th, 2017. For devotions for a deeper life by Oswald Chambers. Acts 5, 17 through 32. The high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there, so they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with a guard standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. We ought to obey God rather than man. Acts 5:29 b You know exactly in what respects you have refused to obey the Lord and persisted in having your own way. When he said, drink with me, you responded, no, Lord, I want to have the pattern and imprint of my church. I want to go their way. I want to live as they live and adhere to their decisions in my life. Instead of having fellowship with him, you have preferred the fellowship of other Christians. The Lord stands beside you very patiently, but in judgment as you refuse him and obey others. Do you want to know Paul's attitude about what other Christians thought of him? He said, with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. 1 Corinthians 4, 3a. Is this true with you, brother and sister? If the Christian crowd you mingle with judge you, so what? Are they your God or is the crucified Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We are called to faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Any movement or person that contradicts Jesus, God will blast to pieces. Prayer thought, deliver me from obeying other people instead of you. And from my utmost, those borders of distrust. Behold, the hour cometh that ye shall be scattered. John sixteen thirty two. Jesus is not rebuking the disciples. Their faith was real, but it was disturbed. It was not at work in actual things. The disciples were scattered to their own interest, alive to interests that never were in Jesus Christ. After we have been perfectly related to God in sanctification, our faith 
has to be worked out in actualities. We shall be scattered, not into work, but into inner desolations, and made to know what internal death to God's blessings means. Are we prepared for this? It is not that we choose it, but that God engineers our circumstances so that we are brought there. Until we have been through that experience, our faith is bolstered up by feelings and by blessings. When once we get there, no matter where God places us or what the inner desolations are, we can praise God that all is well. That is faith being worked out in actualities and shall leave me alone. Have we left Jesus alone by scattering, by the scattering of his providence? Because we do not see God in our circumstances? Darkness comes by the sovereignty of God. Are we prepared to let God do as he likes with us? Prepared to be separated from conscious blessings? Until Jesus Christ is Lord. We all have ends of our own to serve. Our faith is real, but it is not permanent yet. God is never in a hurry. If we wait, we shall see that God is pointing out that we have not been interested in himself, but only in his blessings. The sense of God's blessing is elemental. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Spiritual grit is what we need. That's, that's no sissy faith. Oh, near the cross. Uh, Fanny J. Crosby, 1869. Music by William Howard Doan. Sweet memories of singing this Sunday evening at the old Christian church with all the lights off and the cross night that was lit up with lights. Very special time, I remember. We sang this last Sunday, too. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, tree to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross a trembling soul Love and mercy found me, there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring it seems before me. Help me walk from day to day. With its shadows on me, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured 
soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross i'll watch and wait hoping trusting ever till i reach the golden strand just beyond the river in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Oh.